this is my walnut. This is not the best way to get walnut by far, but it is a very cheap way to get walnut. Right here about, we'll get our piece. Just start cutting it down. And maybe... Sawzall? Now what? Look at that moisture. This thing is almost fully saturated. What on earth? Wow. Go on this side. There we go. Step one, making a rolling pin. I'm actually not going to use this pea because this thing is sopping wet on the inside. I'm going to split it again though and we'll let it dry out for a couple years maybe and then I'll make a video on it. I'm actually going to use this butcher block which I think is actually going to be thick enough just the way it is. So let's get some cutting. Alright, now we're at zero. Wow. Yeah, we're a good bit off. Well that made it almost perfect right there. Oh yes, perfect. The reason I cut out this section of the butcher block is because it has a almost 22 inch long single piece, which is what I want. I don't want butcher block <coughs> joints, which are in fact very nice looking joints in my, what's it called, rolling pin. Hey guys, welcome back. My friend Ben just mentioned to me about helping him make a Celtic knot rolling pin. I had never seen them before. I looked it up. I have to make one. There's no way. I, ha I absolutely have to make one. But the thing I saw most people doing when they made one is they made their cuts through the pin. And you have an X here and then an X on the X and Y axis pretty much. And there's two cuts. Most people cut through it and then just glue it in a piece. And it's like a quarter inch thick. So then you have these lines and then you cut it and then you pull them over so they don't line up anymore. What you have to do is remove the thickness of the piece you're putting in. So you're cutting off that area so it moves your lines so they're straight. So I'm going to try to make one, but I'm going to remove the thickness of the piece of what I'm putting in. So it will eliminate that factor and hopefully look a lot better. Now that I have the pin cut out where I want it, I need to make a sled to cut it. That's 30 degrees. 30 degrees is what I heard. This one, we want to hit run right about here, here, about there. Now we'll cut it. See, we're not cutting it. First, we need to make the piece that's going to run in the slot on the table saw so we can cut. Now I got the thing cut in half, so which wood to use. Got a piece of purple heart here. 
That's long enough. Mm, really stinking close if it's not. Okay, I can use one piece of purple heart. Um, there we go, perfect. Cut that in half, that's two other ones. Maybe a piece of zebra wood for the third cross. Be kind of interesting. Zebra wood, padauk, and purple heart. Let's try that. <laughs> This piece of pine, a very straight piece of pine, which is important. I'm gonna cut a little notch out of it so we can glue this up while being straight. I can clamp it this way and I can put a clamp on the ends to keep everything tight. And we'll see if it works. Nice and square. Oh, yeah. I think I'm not going to use his purple heart because it's too short. It's more agreeable with the bedouk wood. So we're going to stick with that. A couple of clamps on here. Put these on loosely. Get a big clamp. We'll go over the top. Now we leave it. It's been clamping for a couple of hours, I guess. So now we'll unclamp it. Grind down those nubs. Cut it again. And then cut it again to get rid of the thickness of the next piece we're putting in. And then we'll clamp it up again. <laughs> and then we'll do that two more times. I think if I cut it like this, I'll be exactly the same place as that cut, right? It's actually not true. I can fix it. I just need a thicker piece of wood, it just won't be put out, which is perfectly okay, because the other ones aren't going to be put out anyway. Need that thickness right there. Touch less than half an inch. Go for the zebra again. Flat. We're going to make it flat first. Okay. Good. It's still not straight. We just need to shave it down a little bit more. Let's see how much closer we are. A lot closer. Almost perfect. No, it's not even close to perfect. Man. The eye deceived. Closer. I think we're about right now. Looks pretty close. Clamp one side. Again, one clamp loosely placed over here. The big clamp. There's another clamp. All right, there we go. Okay, now it's been drying for about a day, I guess. No, not a day. Dana, uh, half a day. Anyway, now we can make our third cut and put in another piece. I've got to figure out how to cut this thickness out. I love how clean these cuts are. I mean, they're just flawless. Three times. Hope it works.
with that 400 grit, but if you get it wet, it'll raise somewhat. Hopefully, it shouldn't raise raise too much. Mm -hmm. You just get the whole thing, the whole surface wet, and it. Oh man! <laughs> and you get to see what it's gonna look like when it's oiled. Yeah. Wow, it's gonna be pretty. Look at the new wrapper. Yeah, it's not too bad. cutting up my rolling pin and gluing it back up again and then turning. Alright, this is going to carry for a couple days and don't judge, it's really, really cold in here. I'm going to throw this thing in, in a lathe. Yeah. And I should probably mark center first. This looks vaguely like a funeral. Okay. Center. Corner. Corner. There. Right there. Now we set our live center. And then we'll find out if my glue joints actually hold up. I'm kinda nervous. This doesn't feel too good. Alright, let's go. grain, let it dry, and then we'll sand it again, get it back to 400, and then steel wool. Take it off, lop the ends off, sand it, oil it. Throw some butcher block oil on it. Ooh. Thank you guys for watching. I want to give a big thank you to Ben for being in this video and putting the idea in my head to make my own. I definitely would have not have made my own if it hadn't been for him. He made a very beautiful rolling pin, especially that was his very first time turning. That's amazing right there. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.